We're back. We're less tired. Got a beautiful sun coming up over the hill behind me there. It's the 4th of July and we're gonna get some stuff done. Now, my hope is that the Fix-It Elves visited the concrete floor last night and fixed it for me while I was sleeping. They must have been busy. That's fine. <sighs> you know, when you don't really know what you're doing and you don't you don't really understand the effects the weather is going to have on your concrete <laughs> and and your middle age is out of shape uh, sometimes you just can't keep up with the truck again it's it's fine i mean it's it's not what i wanted it to look like um like I said last night, I'll try some thin set over it and it'll be fine. A coat of epoxy paint, it's in the basement. You know, it's the same reason I don't show you my underwear when I get to meet you the first time. By the time you see my basement floor, you're probably going to be forgiven of whatever it looks like. Uh, today we hope to un. thought of her bells and not just the phone. Um, hope to unhump those uh, raft or floor joists that I've got a half inch off, get that straightened back out, get them put back down. Um, it's one of the upshots of putting it down with screws is it, it ain't hard to do. And uh, we'll get the floor joists put on. I'm gonna put these in, um, some Simpson Strong ties. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it Right, right at the uh, J bolts and the foundation, and then they'll go up and grab the the rim joist. It's it's not something that needs to be done here in the canyons of Western Montana, but you know, I was given a roll of it. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. And uh, why not? Why not do it? So we'll put two four inchers, one on either side of the J bolt, kind of angled out in either direction, and then you know we'll just put a mess of two and a half inch torex and actually those might be too long I'll put two inch torex and uh, yeah we should be good to go there so I'm gonna work on that until um, mom and dad are out and about to help me uh, get those joists straightened out I wasn't up there particularly long before everybody else showed up Look at that beautiful sky roll past. One of my favorite parts of the time lapse. So the first order of business on this day was to put in the rest of the blocking. Blocking is used to keep the rafters from twisting once they come under load. Well, floor joists, sorry. From twisting once they come under load and it helps each individual floor joist share that load with its neighbors alongside. It also is pretty critically important when it comes to getting the spacing right for the plywood. We also have to figure out the stairwell and just where it's going to be and how long it's going to be. It's been a bit of a, a thorn in the side because I want to stack the stairs. It makes sense. You got stairs going down to the basement and stairs going upstairs and you might as well stack them because they take up less floor space. The, the problem, of course, is that in one area you're going up over 10 feet and in the other you're only going down about six and a half so they're going to have different runs to them originally when the basement was sort of an afterthought little thing the stairwells were more or less an access hatch kind of thing but in the end when it became such a large space down there so very much storage for christmas crap and all the rest of the things it, it needed a decent stairwell to going up and down and so we had to figure that out. He 
you know, one of the downsides, maybe, uh, of using our own hand-cut rafters is they are coming in at slightly different thicknesses and slightly different heights. So it, it's, it's meant a lot of fiddling. And we see some of that in just how long it took to put two runs of blocking in. It wasn't like a, a, a production lumber stick built home where you could just make up 15 or 20, 14 inch or whatever it is it's going to be and then slap them down. Ours had to be individually measured and, and sort of custom cut for each one. The upshot, of course, is um, uh, we're getting the lumber essentially for free for our time and uh, fuel in the sawmill. And it's quite a bit stronger. That's full dimension 2x10s. It's, you know, 30% stronger than than factory lumber. But this, this sort of is, is the downside. After a bit of an afternoon break, we came back up, having put all the blocking in place, and it laid out the sheets, just sort of taking some measurements and making sure everything was gonna sit well. This is that Avantex stuff. Um, we just wanted to make sure it was all put down properly, you know. I mean, in theory, there's a warranty, not that I ever expect to need it. I just wanna make sure everything is, is lined out right and that we're gonna hit all of our joists. And it looks like we are. Happy Independence Day, we're back at it. You might be asking yourself, what the hell am I doing pushing on the house with an excavator? Well, we put down the sill from a tree known as Twistus lacraptus, or Southern Yellow Pine. And because it sat there for a week and a half before we started putting floor joists on, it, well, it twisted all to hell. So we're actually leaning on the sill with the excavator to push it down and then using those Simpson strong ties to actually attach it where the J bolts go through, thus flattening out the sill boards. Nothing but quality here at the River House. Today's first order was to straighten out those floor joists that we mentioned before that were off slightly. And one of the problems was uh, we couldn't seem to agree on which ones were off. It sort of depended on where you were measuring from and it, it took some time but eventually eventually we got it and we were ready to start prepping it. Now this this stuff that we're putting down this uh, this particular sort of epoxy based floorboard is is only allowed to be glued down with a polyurethane glue and it comes in a pressurized can from from the manufacturer and as a as a result of that you need a, a special gun you know to put it down and you've probably seen those spray foam guns uh, at, at your local hardware stores if you if you've been looking at it recently and this is a hubber product that that we're putting down here and when I ordered over nine thousand dollars of floorboard and wall sheeting and roof sheeting from the company one of the agreements with the company rep was that I would be given uh, the glue and it didn't it didn't come in so we're putting this down with a single can and hoping that they will get it to me on the 5th because uh, that's when the, the rest of the lumber came in. But it turns out that that can goes a crazy long distance. Once again, it, it's sort of a, a trial and error thing. And, and as I mentioned before, none of these rafters sit particularly flat or, or level or straight because of the nature of this beast. And so there's an awful lot of shimming and even some hand planing that goes on in order to make it all fit. When it comes to putting this down, I am actually putting it down with two inch screws. And I, I know that's glued and screwed seems, um, it's a bit of an overkill, right? You, you probably would have shot it down with some twist nails or something like that. but. 
I knew that glued and screwed was never going to squeak, and I, I, just, I just hope it was worth the extra time and effort that, that was put into it. Well, the morning of the 6th arrived, and my glue hadn't come, and I was, I was, I was pretty irritated. I went to the hardware store and I picked up three cans of the 3M polyurethane, two cans of the 3M polyurethane and the 3M gun on the off chance that the uh, the gun I, I, I got from the, from the flooring folks, um, the Hubbard folks, didn't, didn't work. It turned out that the cans were interchangeable and I can just return it, but still that's, that's two cans of glue that I had to purchase in order to, to finish my project when we'd sort of agreed that after $9,000 I'd get some glue. Anyways, putting it down, um, you know, it's it's going it's going reasonably well. They're, they're heavy and it's hot, but no one's fallen through. We, we had to fix the, the end of the end of the stairs and, and get that measurement all placed down. And we're continuing to just power through with the two inch the two inch screws and 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 life is is going okay now when we got to this section it, it turns out that some of these earlier floor joists were maybe a, a little less accurate than some of the 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 later ones that were cut and i i suppose that makes sense you know it's it just it just took a little more work to get these down uh, and, and quite a bit more shimming and whatnot now one of the things that this has definitely shown me is I'm I'm not actually building this house um, dad's building this house and, and I'm helping because I, I don't really know enough about it and it's you know it's a fairly daunting task I I, I think that maybe he's forgotten that he had um, uh, an experienced carpenter and two master carpenters that helped him, you know, build his house. Of course, he was one of them. And uh, this is this is really just us. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm being honest. It's something we can do. And and I think that folks, um, you know, my wife included, really aren't aren't listening when I when I say that that this this might be too much, especially for. Uh, a school teacher who's got to go back to work next month and is preparing to to teach during a, a pandemic so I put a sort of a halt on everything for the moment while I, I think and decide and, and just make my choices going forward well this is it as I'm sure you'll see on the time lapse it takes a lot longer than normal because these are all hand cut floor joists so they got to be shimmed and planed and things because the sawmill isn't perfect I'm gonna end up with that one that was somehow just cut short and no one noticed but we got this much down I am liking the floor so far my glue didn't come so we used up the can of what I had and then I had to just buy two more of the the dap it has to be a polyurethane adhesive so I bought two more cans and they they work with the Avantec gun which is fine but I'm I'm a little irritated that you know nine thousand dollars later and one of the things that they said they'd provide was the glue and I'm buying it but it'll get here and I guess I'll get over it. But it's going down. It's going down okay. It's most definitely not any not any squeaks or anything, that's for sure. Yeah. I think I think this is this is the end. I'll come and finish this up. Put my yard hydrant in and backfill that um, probably tomorrow and it's it's 
It's been a slow but steady three days out here at the river house. Thanks for watching.